Portugal are into the quarterfinals of the World Cup in some style as well. They absolutely hammered Switzerland 6-1. All the headlines before this one kicked off were about Cristiano Ronaldo being benched for the game. All the headlines afterwards will no doubt be about his replacement for the match. It was the 21-year-old Gonzalo Ramos, his first start, uh, his first international start for Portugal. Uh, and the pressure certainly did not show because he got a hat-trick. Uh, he scored early on, putting Portugal ahead in the 17th minute. Uh, Pepe then scored. Uh, we're going from young to old, 39-year-old Pepe scoring to make it 2-0 in the 33rd minute uh, before Ramos got his second just at the start of the second half. Uh, there was goal for Guerrero to make it 4-0. Switzerland did pull one back. It was Manchester City's Manuel Akanji that got that one for Switzerland, but then Ramos got his hat-trick before Rafael Leo uh, added the six late on uh, to make this one 6-1. Water performance from Portugal to put them through to the quarter finals. Right, let's get some reaction, shall we, to that uh, incredible win for the Portuguese. Carve Solokol, our chief reporter, joins us uh, live now from Doha. Uh, good evening to you again, uh, Carve. Well, I mean, it was a big call, wasn't it, from Fernando Santos, the Portuguese manager, leaving the superstar Ronaldo on the bench. But it proved to be an absolute masterstroke, didn't it? Uh, yes, it did. Look, time catches up with us all and time is catching up with Cristiano Ronaldo because there's a new kid in town as far as Portugal are concerned and his name is Gonzalo Ramos. Now, we don't know absolutely for sure why Cristiano Ronaldo uh, was dropped this evening. Was it because of the way he reacted when he was substituted in the previous game against South Korea? Uh, the Portugal manager, Fernando Santos, yesterday saying he didn't like Ronaldo's behaviour. Was that the reason or was it purely for football reasons? Was it a tactical switch? Whatever it was, it paid off because Gonzalo Ramos, he's only 21 years old, he scored a brilliant hat trick. And Cristiano Ronaldo, I think at the beginning, he seemed to be a little bit moody. Obviously, a lot of the cameras were on him. But as the game progressed and as uh, Portugal scored more and more goals, Cristiano Ronaldo was joining in the celebrations on the touchline. Uh, the TV cameras were on him the whole time. He was smiling and joking. And he did come on as a substitute as well uh, for the final 20 minutes, although he didn't manage uh, to get on the score sheet. I think it was a big call by Fernando Santos. I've had some dealings with him in the past. He's a very no-nonsense character. He, he looks like a, a detective uh, from like a sort of US cop show from the 70s or 80s. He's a no-nonsense kind of person. He's very gruff. Uh, he chooses his words very, very carefully. And he sent out the message this evening to Cristiano Ronaldo, the same message that Manchester United sent out to him. Uh, nobody is bigger than Manchester United. No player is bigger than the club. And as far as Portugal are concerned, no player is bigger than the Portugal national team. Portugal don't need Cristiano Ronaldo anymore. Everybody saw that very, very clearly. They played exceptionally well without him. Big call by Fernando Santos. Another big call now. Will he recall him to the starting eleven uh, for that game against Morocco on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, that is the question, but Gonzalo Ramos certainly uh, making an impact and certainly uh, making that decision perhaps a, an easy one for the head coach, uh, the new hero for Portugal. And Cavi, obviously, uh, you score a hat-trick on your first international start. Talk is going to now turn to the January transfer window. He's going to be a striker in demand. Yes, he is. Look, he's already been in demand. What you have to bear in mind about Ramos is he plays for Benfica, but just two years ago, he was only really a youth team player. He was uh, playing in the UEFA Youth League. I think he helped uh, Benfica get to the final where they lost against Real Madrid. But he's really developed very, very quickly. He's got his chances at Benfica now that Darwin Nunes uh, has left and joined Liverpool. And he's been in exceptional form uh, for his club. I think he's scored something like 14 goals already uh, this season. That is why he got his chance uh, this evening. And 
As far as Fernando Santos is concerned, obviously he's somebody who uh, watches all Benfica's games, all Porto's games, all the big games in Portugal, and he's seen something in Gonzalo Ramos that a lot of other people have seen as well. For instance, there were reports back in September that Manchester United were watching Ramos. Uh, other big clubs were watching him as well. Bayern Munich were linked with a move for him. Apparently his... Uh, the asking price for him back then was around £25 million. I think it's going to take a lot more uh, to sign him now if Benfica do decide to sell him in January or next summer. The more goals he scores, the more he plays for Portugal in this World Cup with the world watching, you'd have to presume that his price is going to keep going up and up and up. It did feel a bit like a sort of changing of the guard, didn't it, for Portugal tonight with that Ramos hat-trick and, and starting in place of Ronaldo. I mean, speaking of transfers, though, Carve, regarding uh, CR7, what next for him, do you think, once this World Cup is over? Well, look, we know for a fact that there are at least two clubs in Saudi Arabia uh, who want to sign him. One of them uh, is Al Nasser. Uh, now, they are ready to offer him a contract that is worth, wait for it, around 200 million euros a year. So we're talking about 150 million pounds a year they're willing uh, to pay to sign Cristiano Ronaldo. There's the other arguably bigger club in Saudi Arabia, Al Hilal. I think they've been champions in four of the past five seasons. They're also interested in signing him. They tried to sign him in the summer when he turned down that move because he felt that he could still offer something in Europe playing in a Champions League club. We know there's interest from Saudi Arabia. They want Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, the government there have a big push in investing in sports, trying to do with Saudi Arabia what Qatar have done with getting the World Cup here. And also Saudi Arabia want to host the World Cup in 2030, uh, probably with Egypt and Greece. So it would be a big, big boost for sport, for football, for their profile if they were able to get Cristiano Ronaldo. And I have to think, if Cristiano Ronaldo stays on the subs bench for the rest of this World Cup and if Portugal progress, you would think that people in the football world would think his days at the top, top level are over. I think the longer he stays on the substitutes bench, the more likely it is that his next club will be a club probably in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And Cammy, what about what's next for Portugal then? Because it is the quarterfinals. Uh, perhaps a lot of people would get their World Cup wall chart out. They would have predicted that it was going to be a Spain against Portugal in the quarterfinals. Instead, it's Morocco. Would you say Portugal are now heavy favourites to reach the semi-final? And how much of a marker have they laid down with that performance there tonight? I think it was a fantastic performance by Portugal. Of course, they're going to be favourites uh, playing against Morocco, but virtually everyone Morocco have faced uh, during this World Cup have been the favourites against them. And Morocco have proved a lot of people wrong. They finished top of the group that included Belgium and Croatia. They beat Spain today. Uh, the team who won the World Cup in 2010, the team who dominated possession. I think Spain uh, today had something like a thousand successful passes, more than a thousand successful passes. They only had one shot on target. Morocco had to be very, very disciplined. They had to defend deep and try and hit Spain on the break. I think that is what they will try and do uh, again uh, against Portugal on Saturday. And the key thing is they will have so much support. I keep saying this. They are, I think, probably the best supported team out here in Qatar. And they will have that support again uh, on Saturday against Portugal. Yes, Portugal have played well. We've all seen the goals. It's still fresh in our mind. But I think Morocco are going to be a tough, tough test. And of course, whoever wins that game will play the winners of France against England. So we could see uh, England playing Portugal or Morocco in a semi-final if they manage to get past France and Kylian Mbappe first, of course. Cavi, lovely stuff. Thank you very much for now.